Hello and welcome to a new series of video, this time about the magnetic field. I said, hey, I thought those, those course is about electric engineering, huh? electrical stuff, voltage, current, uh, charges maybe, yeah? but, 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 but not magnetic. Yeah? Magnetic is something completely different in our mind. But we'll see that the magnetic field and the electric field, they are really belonging together. Yeah, they are, they are, I don't want to say they are like, they are like brothers, brothers and sisters, siblings. They're, I don't want to say that because this would not meet the truth. Yeah? Because siblings are from the same parents. All right. But the magnetic field and the electric field, they are bound much deeper together than just being of the same parents. Yeah? They are the cause of each other, maybe. Yeah, so we have electromagnetism. Yeah, this is this is one thing. This is one big block. It's like in the Greek mythology, one thing is is generating the other thing, and this other thing is generating the one thing. So it's the it's the end and the beginning and everything. It's a circle, the circle of electromagnetism. <laughs> but first, first let's have a look uh, about magnetic effects. Okay, let's have a look what effects that we might observe. And here I do have two magnets. They are from a child's play. And well, this is one magnet. It's a rod magnet. And this is another magnet. And let's see what is it. Ooh, you see what has happened. Yeah? They immediately stuck together. Yeah? So it seems like two magnets can Attract can have a pulling force, can have attract to each other. Yeah, so good, huh? And now I turn one over. Zzz. Try it now. Ooh. It runs. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, it seems like we cannot only have attracting forces, we can also have pushing forces somehow. Yeah. Depending on so push yeah. and turning over pull. Yeah. So we have pushing and pulling forces. Yeah. So this is our first observation. Might have pushing. Or pulling. Forces. To each other, right? Two magnets. This is because the two magnets also have two sides and we call them you know, plus and minus it was taken. Yeah? Plus and minus was taken. Uh, we call them north and south. Hmm? There is a historical reason for this. Yeah? I will explain briefly. Yeah? So magnets. Two have two sides. We call them poles. We have a North Pole and a South Pole. And like blue poles have pushing forces. Unlike poles, have pulling forces. All right. So this is this is the reason. Huh? So we have north and the south pole. Why is it called north and south? I said I am going to explain. Well, this is because a compass. A compass is a, is a magnet. Yeah? And one of the poles of the compass is pointing to north. 
Hmm? Right. So that's the reason, right? Why it's called North and South. Hmm? All right. So that's that's our first observation. Okay. And now, put this away. Ha. Do you see this? No. It's hard. Ah, I'll simply take something else. Here is material. It's not, it's not a magnetic material. Eh? And let's see what is happening if I bring this magnet close to this material. So what is happening there? Back! So this material, which is not magnetic, is attracted by the magnet. And now let's see. Is this north or the south or south? I don't know. Turn it over. Yeah, let's see what is happening with the other pole. It's equally attracted. Yeah? So are, there are materials which are attracted by magnets. Does not really matter which pole. Yeah, here one pole, second pole, same result. Okay. So there are materials. which will be, and I write it in brackets strongly, pulled to a magnet. These materials, these materials are called ferromagnetic. Ferromagnetic materials, they're called ferromagnetic. Why ferro? Ferro is, you know, the, the abbreviation from the from the chemical element iron is Fe. It's come from ferrum, ferro, iron, because iron is such material. Okay, iron is such material, ferromagnetic material. There are other materials, yeah, which are also acting like ferromagnetic materials, but iron is the is why it's it's called that way. Yeah, let's see. Huh? Maybe it's just because it's a metal. Yeah? Here, it's a metal. That's copper. Yeah? Let's see what... Nothing. Uh, seems like there's nothing going on. Yeah? Try another material. Here, lead. Also nothing. Heavy, but not... But nothing is happening. What's this? Satin, zinc, also nothing. Yeah. So there are material where it seems like our our magnet has no effect on them. Ah, later people found out that it's not true. Yeah. There are two classes even of materials. And the effect of a magnet is so low that we cannot just absorb it, observe it like we tried to. Okay, so one of those magne uh, magne magnetic materials is called paramagnetic. have very low pulling force to a magnet. So some materials are acting paramagnetic. They are, have, they feel the pulling force from the magnet, but this is so little that we cannot really observe it. Uh, and there are diamagnetic. And those have very low pushing force from a magnet. For us it looks 
for us it looks like the the magnet just does nothing right so we'll make now an experiment an experiment with a ferromagnetic material because i actually want to show you the magnetic field this is a video series about the magnetic field and i will show you the magnetic field with the help of ferromagnetic material how this is working we'll have a look in small experiments which i will build up here all right i've set up the experiment so we have here a bar magnet yeah, a rod magnet somewhere is north somewhere is south i don't really know where it doesn't really matter for for our experiment it doesn't really matter i want to show you the magnetic field and therefore i do have here a little little uh chips yeah little chips from ferromagnetic material so it's 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 iron or something like this i don't really know and what i do is i take those little chips and place them somewhere here at at oh already <laughs> place them somewhere here at a sheet of of paper thick paper so this is actually now paper covered with 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 ferromagnetic chips and now i will take my magnet and now i'll place this oh and look what is happening let's see where we are all right so maybe i make a little bit distribute them ah. Here we see the magnetic field. It's really a strong magnet, it seems like. Yeah. Here we see the magnetic field. The chips are ordering themselves in this in this magnetic field. And we can see. We can see it. Yeah. Maybe add a little bit more chips. We see it a little bit better. Oh. looking good here we see the two poles and this is the magnetic field and we see the magnetic field is somehow starting we say a magnetic field is starting from the north pole and going to the south pole that's just that's how we 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 say huh? so this is how magnetic field looks like yeah made visible by using little chips right. ah, the field we see the field lines actually yeah. we'll get this away and here is now our our magnet underneath good yeah. so that's one thing get rid of a little dust and then i have another thing for you you probably know this is usually used to to measure electric fields or magnetic fields this is a compass hmm? somewhere there is north hmm? in this direction right fits yeah? fits with reality compass yeah? and if i bring now this magnet close to the compass ooh let's see what is happening yeah? the compass is reacting to the magnet So with the help of the compass, we can actually determine the magnetic field. Move a little bit further. Working perfect.
So the compass is an is a good thing to determine magnetic magnetic field somewhere. Actually, this is the purpose of the compass, right? Because if I remove if I remove my magnet now, we should see again that north is somewhere there. Yeah. Right. Seems to be the same. Huh? Yeah. So compasses are are detecting magnetic fields. Usually the earth magnetic field, but if a, if a, if a, um, magnet is nearby, it something is happening. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and now let's see what is happening if we are not using a magnet but current because we said let's see what is what is happening there yeah? if we are using current I will make a new setup here so that we can see it this is our measurement device leave it here okay setup of our next experiment is done I have here a wire no? and I can let the current run through this wire. Uh, it's, it's set up here with my voltage source and I bring in now my measurement device. Here is our, our uh, compass uh, and we said the compass can be used to determine uh, the, the, the magnetic field. Right now it's pointing to north it seems there's no magnetic field. I don't have any current running. So if I turn on now the voltage and let the current do its job, let's see what is doing, what is done with the with the compass. Oh, the compass is influenced. Okay, right now there are three amps currently passing through this current, and we see it is happening. I turn off now, and it's going back. Aha, uh -huh. and the compass. Is detecting magnetic fields. So let's try what is happening if I change the polarity. So if the if the current direction is now different, another direction. Let's turn on. Oh, it's moving in the other direction. All right. So it seems like the direction of the current does have influence on a magnetic field. It seems like current moved charges does surround themselves with a magnetic field and depending on the movement direction there is a different different magnetic field north and south is going to change right? so this we just found out that current and magnetism are somehow bound together let's note this So, yeah, now we have seen what is going on there. The compass showed us, showed us the effects of, of current. Yeah. And this is our next, our next observation. Our next observation, we will write down Current, and I will also note in in a wire will cause a magnetic field. Okay. Current in the wire will cause a magnetic field. This is also actually what, what Ampere found out. This is why Ampere, the, 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 the unit of the, of the current, is called Ampere, because this Ampere was experimenting with this. And he found out uh, that if two wires yeah, are close to each other or next to each other, and those 
the, the current through the two wires yeah, are going in the same direction, then these two wires will attract each other. Okay, so there's a pulling force then. If the current is vice versa, yeah, so one current, one wire is going in this direction, the current, one wire is going in this direction, the current, then we have a pushing force. Yeah? And if two currents are crossing each other, yeah, they tend to go parallel. Yeah? So there's a turning force then. Yeah? And we cannot see uh, a magnetic field surrounding a, a conductive material just because it's filled with, with charges, right? Current is moving charges. Yeah? And if there is no moving charges, there's also no magnetic field. Yeah? So, magnetic fields causing a force to move charges. So the charges have to move that there is an a force effect. So this is what we could observe, see, even on a, on a desktop. All right. This magnetic field causing a force to move charges. This we will have, we will have a look at it. Yeah? We'll have a look at it in, in, actually in our next video. Yeah? In our next video we will have a look what is causing this force? Yeah, we will talk about uh, we'll talk about the magnetic flux density and the thing called Lorentz force. And this is what this force is called. How I will explain next video. Yeah, how it is working. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.